Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. Boxing, find a way to win, you find a way to lose. Hey, look, man. Why is everybody sleeping on El Azteca, Mario Barrios? Let me tell you something. If Mario Barrios were to fight Jerron Ennis, he would fight him for legacy and pride. He ain't just coming there for no payday. All right? This ain't going to be a Chikadzian. You know, even Roman Villa tried. But Mario Barros has a few more layers to him than Roman Villa. Mario Barros standing just as tall as Jerron Ennis, dimension-wise, they're very close. I don't see how people are here just acting like Jerron Ennis is just going to come in there and walk straight through Mario Barrios. Now, understand this. I, I think Jerron Ennis should be favored in that fight. I'm telling you right now. Jerron Ennis is, is special. But I just went back and forth with somebody. Um, matter of fact, I think I'll be able to show y'all. See, it cracks me up when people want to attack me and question my boxing knowledge because I'm just having a conversation. But it just shows you that it's different experience with life and situations. And also, different, uh, different experiences with uh, boxing, and I say the depth, the depth of boxing, okay? Um, now, I'm going to show you something. Because with me, and, and I have conversations, um, I'm not a bandwagoner. I don't just jump on and start saying the same crap that somebody else said. You know, I'm not a parrot. But let me show you something. So right here, I did a little YouTube short where I said Mario Barros is coming for the number one spot at welterweight targeting Jerron Boots in this because, I mean, that's kind of the position Barrios has kind of put himself in. And a guy here calls himself Jersey1287 says, man, stop it. Boots eats that MF for lunch. And I go, which is a fact. We don't know that. However, I, I'd side with Boots for the win against most anyone other than Crawford. And he goes, we do know that. If you don't, then I question your boxing knowledge. And then I go, you sound young and inexperienced with life and also boxing. The best fighter doesn't win a fight. It's the boxer who fights the best on that night. Now, anyone who knows me and been following this boxing channel, you know I have a few sayings, and that's one of them. Let me tell you something. You don't have a guy like Mario Barrios who comes off of, right, two back-to-back -back losses in huge pay-per-view events and think he's going to now, after getting two wins, after getting rid of, uh, leaving trainer Virgil Hunter and moving his camp out, the, uh, out of San Francisco Bay and heading over to uh, Las Vegas, Nevada and hooking up with a new trainer, the guy Bob Santos, who's helped him come back to get two back-to-back -back wins. Right? You, and not just wins, you know, stopping his opponents. You, you don't just come down and say this guy is going to get in there and Boots is just going to walk right through him. A couple of things I want to point out. First, I want to say it again. I think Boots should be favored, okay? Because people don't, they don't hear that part. They just hear me talking about Mario Barkers. And what I'm going to give y'all, this is, this, is, this is a fact now. When he, when he fought Javante Davis, uh, it was hard for him to make 140. But he did it for that fight just because of the money he was going to make. Okay? So he, he almost did like, I'll, I'll probably get, you know, ridicule for this. He almost did like Earl Spence. You know, get down, the payday. It is what it is. But what we didn't know until maybe a month, month and a half ago, is that Mario Barros got down to, to weigh 140 pounds for a moment in time, a weight he shouldn't have been at anymore. And... Tank Davis and his team put a rehydration clause in there. So he couldn't rehydrate to where he would be the most comfortable. Now, see, that makes a difference in a fight. You don't make excuses. He never said anything about it. It was, uh, I don't know, who was interviewing him? And, oh, no, he said something on Twitter. No one knew that. And he was like, it doesn't matter. He doesn't make excuses. But he was like, he got annoyed uh, with Ryan Garcia and the rehydration clause stuff and all that. 
that's when he came and he chimed in and he said something because he just felt like he just felt like it should have been it should have been mentioned. Okay, so then the the the, the second loss when he fought Keith Thurman, another big pay per view event, man. You gotta go get that money. But he was with you know Virgil Hunter. I call him the Whisperer. You know what I'm saying? He's always in in this fighters air like, hey man, you know. You get in there, have a shit, shit, shit. man. Nobody want to hear that whispering shit in that ear, in the corner, especially when they just came out of a tough round. Look, Andre Ward was accustomed to Virgil Hunter because they've been with him since he was a kid. You know what I'm saying? But not everybody wants somebody whispering in their damn ear. You know what I mean? That, 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 let me tell you, when when you get a trainer who's trying to motivate his fighter in the corner, that, there's not too many of these Teddy Atlases running around here. You know what I mean? To give the fireman speech. But what I'm getting at is, this new trainer that Mario Barros is with, it, it's benefited. Also with the fighters he's around and being in Vegas, Vegas is the fight capital of the world. So I think that was the best move he could have done for his career, man. Um, especially now, he's hitting his prime, new trainer. He's uh, he's at a weight, he's comfortable. And you know his goal, is for him to, to, to pick up the title. And I'm just letting y'all know right now, when you take a look at Mario Barros and what he has planned for the next few years, you know, there's a reason why he's targeting Jerome Boutsinis. And I would say this, man. Jerome Boutsinis is a special fighter, but I just don't like the inactivity, man. You all you always hear these fighters talk about, you know, it's just, I should have taken a tune-up, I should have done this. No matter what you think, Mario Barros is a tough fight for Jerome Boutsin, especially at Jerome Boutsin is coming off of being inactive. You know, I think Earl Spence kind of, he kind of got fighters talking about, um, I don't take tune-ups. You know, I don't know who, uh, Earl Spence was the first person I heard talking like that. And then coming back and going straight into tough fights, especially after what Earl Spence went through with the car accident. Went straight into a tough fight with Danny Garcia. So now you got all these other fighters about they don't take tune-ups. Tell you what, they going out there if they want and uh, not take a tune-up. And then when the real deal gets started, and uh, my thing is, if you're going to be Al Capone, go all the way. You can't come down making excuses after you come and um, get in the ring and the fight's closer than what it should have been and you get the victory or you lose. You know what I'm saying? Don't come making excuses. should have never took the fight. But that being said, let, let, let's see what happens because there's so much going on in the welterweight division uh, and I think it's pretty interesting to see exactly what's happened here with Mario Barrios and uh, the fact that he got that big win this past weekend against uh, Yugas. but I, I think at the same time we got to be real about what we saw with Barrios who's 28 and 2 now right um, I think we just got to be real with what we saw because that left eye of Yugas was damaged by Pacquiao and then Earl Spence totally destroyed it. You know what I'm saying? Like what I'm telling you is a fact. He fought Pacquiao who's a southpaw, Earl Spence who's a southpaw. Them two southpaws, but it was like, you know, death by left hand. And and, and Barros just very fortunate to come in there, man, and um be able to jab, jab and target that eye and to see that eye start to take damage and immediately start to swell and close. So um he should be thanking Pacquiao and Earl Spence for that victory. But I still think he would have beat him because he was just, you know, in the early rounds, you know, he could see that he was just, a, he just looked sharper. And he, he was getting, uh, you can see something like he had to wind up on shots and wasn't able to get off it as fast as I think he wanted to. But then again, it goes back to the inactivity, ring rust, and everything else. It, it does affect the fighter. But when you take a look at right here, Mario Barris is the WBC interim world welterweight champion. Look, we know he ain't fighting Terrence Crawford next. Um, he, he's in position where he could end up doing the fighting the boots in this or fight, fighting somebody. It could be Cody Crowley, but he's in a good position. He's already called out boots in this. That fight could happen. It could happen. Barrios didn't really take any damage. That fight could happen, but I just have to question. Matter of fact, let me, I'll tell you, because, uh, I probably should have pulled this up. I, I just, I just don't understand when it comes to a lot of these fighters. 
Let me pull this up for you. The damn inactivity, right? I'm pulling it up so you guys can see me work while we, uh, while we talk. I'm pulling something up for you. We're talking about inactivity. So, so when you take a look at, uh, uh, I should have put everything in there. I'm tripping. When, when you when you start taking a look at, here it is right here. Jerome Boots in this right. 31 wins, 28 KOs, 90% KO ratio, right? Now, the last time he fought was, you know, July 8th. So he fought on July 8th right here. You know what I'm saying? So what is it, June, July, August, September, October? It's already been 90 days. He should be in the ring before the end of this year. If he don't end up in the ring before the end of this year, that's six months out of the ring. What's he, he going to end up in a situation like Terrence Crawford. These guys going, not taking any damage in a fight and sitting here and not, not having an opportunity to get back in the ring before the end of the year. To me, that's crazy. But, you know, if he can line up something with Barras before the end of the year, I think that's, that, that six months may not be that bad of a deal. But still, you got to stay active. I just did a video talking about Terrence Crawford. You know, he's hot right now, but he's going to cool off sooner than later. And I just think these guys need to be staying active, but who knows why they're not getting the ring. Who knows what's going on behind the scenes, what their promise, the kind of money being talked about, and them not wanting to go out there and risk taking a loss and missing out on a bigger and better opportunity. Especially with both sides. He's just sitting there waiting, licking his chops for an opportunity at the undisputed distinction against Crawford. But that being said, just like I said, Crawford needs to stay active. Boat Sinners needs to stay active. And Barnes could be that fight. Um, but that being said, I think that fight ended up being a lot tougher than what people think. I'm not saying Barnes will beat Boots, but what I will say is the best fighter on that on that night is the fighter who wins. It's not the, the best boxer, but the boxer who fights the best on that night. And we've seen time and time again where you get a fighter in the ring, where you, people kind of say, yeah, this person doesn't really have a chance, and then they pull off the upset, and everybody's sitting there scratching their heads like, how'd that happen? And I'll tell you what, if Mario Barrios was to fight Boots and somehow beat him, because Barrios can fight, man. I don't see how people don't get Barrios credit. This ain't the damn Barrios that fought Javante. It's not the Barrios that fought Keith Thurman. This, this, this Barrios here is locked in. New trainer, uh, fighting at 147. He's comfortable at the weight now. And y'all, I don't see what y'all talking about. But that being said, if he was to beat Boots in this, Jesus Christ, man. Boxing world be flipped upside down. But that being said, when that Boots that was in that ring against Roman V, Lord have mercy. I mean, let me tell you, something, that guy was doing some amazing stuff. And the thing about it, Mario Barros isn't the guy who's going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee like Chikadze in Barros is coming to fight. So that could create a lot of opportunities for Boots in to, to exploit the vulnerabilities of Barrios. But at the same time, if Boots in is just getting cute, he's going to get hit. And um, Boots likes to get hit. He even said he likes to get hit, uh, which I just think Barrios can hurt you, but I don't, I don't know if he has the one hitter quitter. But I just you just never know. You just never know. Hell, if Devin Haney can hit somebody with one shot <laughs> and knock him out. If Polly Malinaj can hit somebody and knock him out, you'd have to think Mario Barros can do it too. That being said, man, more to come, but I'm just telling y'all. <sighs> Don't sleep on El Azteca, man. Mario Barros is going to fight. He will fight Boots in this. He's going to fight him, fight him for that legacy and pride. He's not in there fighting just for a payday. He's going to fight until he can't fight no more simple and that's gonna make for a very intriguing fight that being said y'all keep cool i'm in the breeze